Hello everyone, I'm Adam Repulse Vox and I'm a little bit under the weather so I might sound a little weird, but today I'm bringing you a kind of impromptu Plex tutorial as I solve one of my own problems with the program. Now of course I this is sponsored by Plex, they do sponsor me to create educational content for their platform, but I've been using it as I mentioned in last week's video for going on like four, year, four or five years now, and one of these sections that I have always neglected and never really utilized, despite the fact that I have like 50 gigabytes or more worth of footage in, is the other videos library. Or this is what I call it. I think by default it's called like home movies, uh, but I call it other videos because this is just stuff I've downloaded from the web that I wish to archive or save for myself or whatnot and potentially watch later. But then I never use it because if you look at it, since there's no inherent metadata to most of these downloaded files or ripped files or what have you, it is just a bunch of... I have, I have literally over 9,000 files, and none of them really have proper titling. Now, of course, th this is going to be like a tips video and a tutorial, and so my first tip would be to organize and properly label things as you go. But since I have not done that, and if you already have a library, you have not done that yourself, that might be a little tedious. So... I'm going to show you a couple ways to kind of clean this up and organize things a little bit right after this. I'm Meeple's Vox here to make tech easier and more fun. Today, talking about Plex Media Server, but the other videos or home movies category. You can use this for your actual home movies, and once I get this organized, I will do so as I actually have some, where are they, some rips, yeah, of some home movies dating all the way back to, you know, the early 90s, and some of them even in the 80s, then I need to get organized and placed in different places and things like that. Uh, but I, if you just kind of import 9,000 videos like I have, it becomes a mess. Now, my, again, you can put whatever you want in here. I typically have video guides that I have purchased or downloaded that were free uh, from different video platforms. A few ripped YouTube videos or like Digital Foundry gives you videos from their Patreon, things like that. So first and foremost, this is the default view. It's set to view the individual movies and by title up here at the top. And that's great, except for the fact that when they're not titled correctly and things are not organized, you just get a raw list of videos, which... It's kind of impossible to sort through. So easy, the number one easiest tip of actually sorting through them is simply to click on movies and click folders. And it's not, I don't think it will generate thumbnails, unfortunately, for this kind of stuff. So you kind of have to go off the titles for right now, but this helps you move through it a lot easier to organize. Because So now, instead of having 9,000 listings, we have a couple individual videos that aren't in folders, but we're down to like 54 entries total, which is a lot easier to work with. And then we can create what are called playlists, which I don't actually use all that much, and I want to fix that. And you can actually mix and match different media for playlists. So I'll show you that in a minute. So we're going to start something basic. This is a archive of the Digital Foundry videos that they had up in their uh, Patreon. The, the, uh, I think it's just digitalfoundry.net that you can download. Go to the individual folders. Now this is a little bit more tedious since you click, can't seem to select entire folders of content. Um, but you go into each folder and you click where the little circle is to select individual items. And they come up, come up here, add to playlist, and you can make a playlist for your different media types. So this one's going to be Digital Foundry. Add. And see, it's going to have it there and then sort it by the titles. And then you can go in and manage from there. So then if I keep doing this, it's going to be kind of annoying if you have to keep clicking through. But there you go. Click, click, click. Add to playlist. Digital Foundry, whammo. Okay, and once the playlist is already made, it's not going to take you out of it anymore. So that makes it a little bit easier. Add to playlist, Digital Foundry. You get the idea. Now, one feature I would like to see added, I kind of use these videos as feature requests too, is when you're in the playlist view, to be able to go on and make new playlists. That way, when you're first making it, it doesn't have to take you out of your current view of your media. But that's okay. So if you just want to do a sort of your other videos like that, you can do that. So for the channel Digital Foundry, we have a play we have a playlist called Digital Foundry. But where it gets interesting is when you have extras and things like that. So for example here, 
I have this folder called Yu Yu Hakusho Extras, and it's the extras clips from the discs of the series. So I can check all of these. Add to playlist, Yu Yu Hakusho. Add. Bam. All right, so those are the extras, and we could have made that a dedicated extras folder, but instead I can now go to TV shows, go down to Y, Yu Yu Hakusho, select season, add to playlist, Yu Yu Hakusho. I'm probably butchering how that's said. I do realize that, but hey. Now, you have all of the extras, but then you have all of the episodes. And then you can reorder to your desire. You can drag them around and things like that. Currently, it just kind of adds them in the order that you added them in. But you have everything together, which is really great with movies, too. I don't think I actually have any movies extras at the moment since I kind of ditched them. But I do have, I do have some work print releases of some movies that we could theoretically work with here. All right, for example, I have The Empire Strikes Back, the specialized edition, which was a fan-made project created from the original film slides and the like. And so what I can do is exit out of that. I can select that and just create a playlist called Star Wars and have all of the different movies of Star Wars in it. So then we can pull up the normal movies folder, Star Wars, do a little search here. Oh, look, we got those movies. So we can just hit enter. And it looks like when you search, you can't manually, you can't select the individual ones, but you can go over here Click the little dots, add to playlist, Star Wars, add to playlist, Star Wars, and so on, and organize it that way, which has actually been a concern for mine when it comes to these little uh, despecialized thingies that I have, the different custom versions of movies and the work print releases, is keeping them together with the originals without replacing the originals. And this way, I have a dedicated, once it loads here, playlist with just that. And with the Yu Yu Hakusho, I have the episodes alongside the extras as well. And then I can just go in if I just want to watch the opening for whatever reason. I actually like a lot of anime openings, so I can totally do this. And just watch it just because. So these are fairly basic things, but I've received a lot of questions about basic functionality of Plex, and this is something that even I myself have just completely ignored. I've just kind of said, oh, that's going to take too much time, and now that I like have a general idea of what the, uh, oh, that's not good, my Bob Ross archive is missing. I will have to check that out. That's really sad. I had like the entire rip of Bob Ross, and it's showing up as nothing at the moment, so I will have to check that out, but that's another thing, is I've gone through and I have you know, not organize this or kept track of this because of how tedious it seemed when it's actually not that bad at all. And so I'm actually really excited to get things organized here and actually be able to watch through some of my weirder video libraries in my Plex library on my TV and my Xbox and things like that now that I have this sorted. So I hope this video was helpful for you. It was <laughs> helpful for me discovering it along the way. If you enjoyed, smash the like button. Get subscribed for more awesome tech tips. I have affiliate links for Plex in the description down below where you can sign up for a free account. You can sign up for a Plex Pass for yourself or you can sign up for a Plex Pass for a gift for someone else. And it all gives a kickback to my channel and helps let them know that I sent you and yada yada. But if you're watching this, I am uploading this on a Wednesday. If you're watching this, this up to the Friday after this has been uploaded. So like the next couple days, I still have a three month free trial code for a Plex Pass. It expires probably over the weekend. It was a limited run from that video, but I uploaded a video talking about why you might want to use a Plex Pass, and I was given a free trial code that you have a couple more days to act on if you want to use it. So go check that out linked in the video description or the YouTube card icon. I'm Adam Marie Plus Vox, here to make tech easier and more fun. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you next time. Epos Vox is a Patreon-supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen right now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other things, go to patreon.com slash to learn more.